Back off of a weekend, we are ready to get back in the saddle. I don't know if these two guys are Cowboys or not. I make that assumption. It is the Bet U.S. College Basketball Show. Great to be back with you. Great to be back with the big man on campus, Jeff Nadu. Mid-major Matt, Matt Josephs as well. Guys, hope you had a fantastic weekend. Hopefully you had a better weekend than my Memphis Tigers. My God, we've got to get into that in a couple of moments. But I don't want to start on a dour note. I just want to say, how are you and how was the weekend? A weekend was great. Thank you for asking. I hope you guys had a good weekend as well. Uh, last week of college football, at least for uh, the season and the, the championship week. Now we have college basketball for a couple of weeks as the main entree until bowl season. You know, a lot of exciting time. I mean, Christmas is coming up. A lot of good things to uh, to look forward to. So, yeah, ready to be back. Short card today, but we'll try to find some some value here. Matt is in a good mood because not only did the Eagles win, they do, and uh, Matt are Philadelphia Eagle guys. I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneer guy. They remain quiet most of the time around me about the Eagles and the Bucks. But the Eagles did win. Syracuse won. So you're smiling on a Monday, Matt. Yeah, any chance you can get to snap a long streak in Florida State, that was a fantastic effort. Now we're going to go and try and beat uh, Villanova tomorrow. I don't think we will, but at least, uh, you know, a nice win for the resume as the net comes out today. The the first uh, net uh, rankings came out today, which is always fun. And again, to explain what that is, if people are not familiar, they've been doing this now the last two or three years. This is the NCAA's official metric that they utilize mostly. We won't say entirely, but when they go through the selection process, they are using their own formula different than the RPI power index or what you hear ESPN talk. Everybody's got a formula, but the NCAA net is the one to pay the most attention to for how they might be seeding teams or if your team might be in or out. So that's all uh, good to know. We do have a slate of games that we'll get to in a couple of moments. Uh, coming off the weekend, though, some interesting games uh, from this past weekend to watch and observe. you guys have any overall thoughts, Jeff, you first off of what you saw this weekend? Yeah, I mean, you kind of uh, alluded to it at the beginning of the show. I, I mean, M- Memphis continues to be very disappointing. I you know, felt like the talent coming in this year was – Obviously, Jalen Duran and and Imani Bates. I saw Jalen Duran here in Philadelphia. He's a Philadelphia kid. You know, there's a lot of talent on this team. They brought in Earl Timberlake and you know Landers Noli last year. You know, there's a lot of talent here. But the problem that Penny Hardaway has is, and this guy is a stone cold recruit kind of guy, and that's it. And I think sooner or later, these recruits are going to start getting to the point where it's like this guy can't coach, and he can't coach. He has no idea what he's doing. Um, I think the last three or four years, they've had a turnover rate of 300 or worse. For whatever reason, he doesn't seem to understand that you need a point guard uh, to run and have that role in this type of offense with all these huge, hawking, athletic kids around. Um, look, I've said before, I actually saw Penny Hardaway when he came uh, to Philadelphia at, up at Temple when Memphis came in. And I, I have to admit, even I was... Um, you know, kind of, I, I felt like it was great. I mean, Penny Hardaway on the court with his foam mm-hmm. posits. I mean, he looked like a, it was awesome. He, I grew up on Penny Hardaway, but when you get past kind of the, the, that, that mask of like, oh, it's Penny Hardaway. He's just a real bad coach at the end of the day. I mean, he has no idea what he's doing, and I think he's driving Memphis into the ground. I think they would be a much better team without Penny Hardaway. Now, that's not to say they'd have the same players, but um, I don't know how long you put up with this. This is dreadful stuff you're seeing here. And so just so we recap, and I promise we're going to move on, since they lost in the preseason NIT championship game to Iowa State, they drop a game against a bad Georgia team at Georgia, and then a very winnable game at Ole Miss because Ole Miss was without, without their best score, their best guard. They, they, they find a way to botch that, lose that, and he's now calling out the players in the media saying that, that we, we are selfish. He's using that word. I, I'm going to readjust my lineup on, on guys that aren't being selfish. Matt, you wanted to follow up here because really this this recipe comes down to uh, it, 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 what he has created, Penny Hardaway, with bringing in a lot of blue chip talent, but maybe it doesn't all fit together. Go ahead, Matt. Bust well, away. I mean, he said that, you know, he's acting, uh, his team's acting like they're an AAU team, and they pretty much are. And the problem is when you bring a bunch of alphas in, 
And then you're somebody's got to be a beta, and somebody's got to be the guy who facilitates. And you just all the alphas just want to shoot and just run and not actually run an offense. And that's the problem. Sometimes you need the glue guys, the Marek Dolajais, the guys that come in. They just know what their job is. They they pass, they rebound, things like that. And Memphis doesn't have those guys. They have a bunch of guys who are used to being the guy who has the ball in their hand when the game is over. And They haven't figured that out yet. And Penny's not the type to kind of help them out through this because he probably brought them into Memphis and said, hey, you're going to be a star. No, you're going to be a star. No, you're going to be a star. So uh, they kind of reap what they sowed there. Right. And remember also real quick, I mean, we have to remember this team isn't they're they're basically the Ben Simmons LSU team where, you know, it was clear Ben Simmons didn't care about college. It was just kind of a stepping stone because he had to do it. Imani Bates and Jay, I mean, Imani Bates was, was a guy that I was surprised even went to college. I was sure he was going to go into the G League. Um, he, that's just the kind of guy that he is. I don't think he cares. He doesn't want to play college. He doesn't care about it. All these guys have their thought on next year. They're both top 10 picks, uh, and they're both going to go to the NBA and make a lot of money. Um, you have to either decide at Memphis, do you want – just those high flyers for a, for a year, you know, and, and you're not going to win anything, or do you want to actually win and, and have a good basketball team? If you want that, Petty Hardaway is not the guy, uh, and you need a whole different type of team because uh, th- this stuff's really hard to watch. All right. Enough. Enough about my alma mater. they got to get it better. Uh, there are some teams that were getting it better this weekend. Alabama, who Memphis has still got to play, by the way, coming up. <laughs> Alabama, very impressive against Gonzaga this weekend. My Lord, did Arizona with a dunk fest uh, at Oregon State this week. Did they look good? So we've got all kinds of different teams that did do well uh, from out of this weekend. Why don't we get to it? The peeps are here. They're live with us. We're here Monday through uh, Friday at 1 Eastern time. And again, if you don't see something on the slate, a game or whatever that we're talking about on the slate of games, throw it in the chat. We'll try to get it to it in the uh, in the Q&A. Um, uh, here in a little bit. Again, a lighter card today, so we got more chance for Q&A if you're with us live here on this Monday. And again, uh, we'll get to that in a bit. All right, let's take a look at the records right off the bat here, coming off of Friday, coming off the weekend, uh, and how the handicappers looked uh, heading into this week, this new week. This is actually the fourth week now of the college basketball season. So we see Jeff hovering right around the 500 mark, Ian Cameron as well. And as well, Matt, we're going to be better starting this week. We had a good night on uh, Wednesday night uh, leading into the Thursday show uh, back from last week. So let's see what we have and let's get it going for this week in game. Number one that we're going to feature is a Big Ten showdown, a Monday night Big Ten game between Illinois and Iowa. This one in Iowa City where the Hawkeyes are the three-point favorite. Illinois has been better as of late and why not? Because they have Kofi Coburn Back in the lineup, the All-American big man. Our total is 151 and a half. I'm not sure if uh, Jeff Nadeau or mid-major Matt will have a play on this game. It is arguably the marquee game uh, tonight. Who wants to begin here with something about this game this evening, if not a play? Yeah, I mean, I'll say this, um, and I'm sure Matt will you know, anchor the same opinion. Until you get some good info on Murray, and look, no one has good info. Okay, at this point, I, I've scoured. No one's going to find it. And look, you're probably not going to get any legit info because Andy Katz, shame on Andy Katz. Friday, Andy Katz tweeted out that uh, Keegan Murray was practicing and shooting free throws. And I think that it made a lot of people, okay, look at Iowa and say, okay, what do we have here? And then he just doesn't play. So I wouldn't take really anything you hear. Um, you just got to kind of hope that if you like Iowa, you like the over or something that he plays. I will say... Whether he doesn't play or not, I think the pace will be there in this game four and over. Um, you know, but but I need Keegan Murray. I mean, Iowa just isn't the same type of team uh, w- without Murray. And I know you know people will point out, well, they scored forty four in the second half and and almost uh, beat Purdue. Well, yeah, um, they didn't shoot the ball real well, so you have to expect positive regression will be there for them offensively. I would probably lean over, and I don't think Illinois is very good defensively. They want to play it at some with some pace and. I think this would be a good offensive matchup. I feel like 150 and a half, 151 is a little low. I would lean towards Murray playing. It was a tweaked ankle. I mean, it wasn't like he he had uh, you know something crazy that that you know like a back or something. So I would lean that he does play. I would lean over probably in that case. Illinois did destroy Rutgers on Friday night by 30 points. Mid-major Matt, again, a thought from you on this matchup in Iowa, if not a play. 
Uh, I would, th- I mean, Illinois, the difference has been Alfonso Plummer lately. I mean, he's getting more minutes and he's putting in a lot more buckets. And obviously some of it's a situation of Carbello's injury and some of the things that have been going on. But if they're smart, even when Carbello comes back, they'll play Alfonso Plummer more. I didn't, I mean, look, the, uh, you know, Jeff's right. The, the over would be a place I would consider. I also would kind of consider the, the Illinois team total over. Because whenever Iowa's faced anybody with a pulse this season, they haven't been that good defensively. They give 73 to Longwood, 82 to Alabama State, 74 to Virginia in a 57-possession game, by the way. And then they just gave up 77 to Purdue, which is, you know, actually pretty good considering Purdue's averaging, it feels like, 80, 90 points. But, like, Iowa's defense, I don't trust it. So, like, if I was to play anything in this game, I'd consider the Illinois team total. But I wasn't very strong on anything because – it's a lot of points, and, and this is, you know, Illinois' first tough, true road game of the season. Uh, so we don't know how they're going to come out and play. You know, they, they lost that game against Marquette, uh, so, and they didn't look good doing so. So it would be something I would consider, but nothing strong enough to make an official play. All right, fair enough on that. And again, the Purdue Boilermakers right now are the team in the Big Ten as they are now ranked number one in the country for the first time ever. They have never been number one in the AP poll. Again, the goal is to be number one at the end of everything in the NCAA tournament, but still it's quite an accomplishment for Matt Painter's team as they remain undefeated. So if we don't have an official play there, so no official play on Illinois and Iowa, again, Iowa laying the three in this matchup tonight in the Big Ten. Let's get to a game that we do have a play on, and that is North Carolina Central and the Citadel. I say this all the time with pride and with pleasure. We scour the board. We have all kinds of games. We've talked about the Citadel a couple of times in the first few weeks on this show. And the Citadel laying eight and a half points are over under 148 on the number. And Jeff Nadu, you are going to have a play on this game. What's up here? Yeah, I mean, I'll continue to carry the the, the water for Duger Bauckham in the Citadel. I think they're better than they've been in years past. And I know I'm sure the listeners are even match pricing. Well, I don't really want to lay eight and a half at the Citadel. Um, you know, I, I think this year the team's a little different. And I think this is also a very down NC Central team. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've spoken with Lavelle Moat before. He's one of the nicest people I've ever talked to. Um, one of the best coaches in the country and a guy that really is – uh, a, a perfect individual you want coaching your son. He's a great guy and a good coach. But this is not a good basketball team this year. They have a lot of issues. They had a lot of COVID issues last year, really never got off the, the heap last year. And, and this year has been no different. Um, they've really struggled to do anything at a high level. Offensively, they have very little talent. Uh, and on the defensive end, they have just gotten shredded in transition, which against the Citadel on the road is not a good recipe. Remember, though, this is a Citadel team that's playing a little bit slower. They're playing a little bit better defensively. Uh, and quite frankly, when you look at their defense, especially against a team like NC Central, I think they're going to hold their own tonight. Um, I feel like this number is just a little too low. Um, Citadel has multiple guys that can hurt you. Obviously, Hayden Brown, Tyler Moff. But, you know, uh, Stephen Clark's been really good for them. Roche's come out of the out of the unknown and been really good. Um, I just look at this and kind of see a double-digit victory for the Citadel. Um, it's bad times right now down at NC Central. Remember, keep in mind, they played a tough schedule. I'm not going to say they haven't. But this is a team that lost by doubles to Gardner-Webb, UNC Asheville, Alabama State beat them, a SWAC team. They have three wins on the year, USC Upstate by two, and then something called Warren Wilson. I don't know what that is. And <laughs> the Apprentice School. The Apprentice School, that sounds like a, wait, a Donald wait a Trump minute. Uh, type of thing. Wait a minute. What, what is that? Did Trump rename his university to the yeah. Apprentice School? Is that like what that show? is? What is but that? But they again? actually have a basketball team, you're saying? Yeah, I, I guess maybe the son, Barron, he's pretty tall. Maybe he's playing on that team. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I don't. Long. Maybe he's in an AAU program. We don't know. We can't confirm right. that. But the Apprentice, they played the Apprentice School. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two out of three of those games. So yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know what NC Central is. I don't think it's going to be anything good tonight. They also play with pace, which isn't real good against Citadel. I think Citadel win this like 82, you know, 67, something like that. I'm going to lay the eight and a half with the Citadel at home. Uh, Matt, do you have any thoughts here? Mid-major Matt, this is kind of in your wheelhouse. Uh, I mean, not really, other than I, I go back to that first game against Richmond because I watched that game and I was in studio for that game and just to see how well North Carolina Central, at least for a half, shot the ball from three-point land and was in that game against Richmond. Now I look, they're shooting 22.9% 
from three point land. I mean, their offense is pathetic. So, um, you know, this is one of those teams we've talked about. It's a MEAC team that's going to constantly be on the road. I mean, they were, you know, on the road Saturday. They were on the road a bunch of times already this season. So you wonder about road weariness. I mean, I'm, obviously, they probably went home from UNC Asheville and then are now going to the Citadel. So it's not like they're constantly on the road, but. Jeff's logic seems pretty sound. Uh, the only thing, as he said, the only thing I'd be concerned about is just laying a ton of points with a team like the Citadel, but they seem to be in a good form right now. So I, I kind of agree with what he's doing. Hey, by the way, uh, just to go back to that Richmond game, at one point with five minutes to go in the first half, Central was up 33-19. Okay? They were up at the half by five. Ended up losing by double digits. So he's right. They had that one kind of moment in the sun where they couldn't miss. And they still lost by double digits. So, um, yeah, uh, it's not easy. But I, again, I've been high on the Citadel. I think they're better uh, than they've been in years past. And I, I think Central's way worse. So let's do it officially with Jeff's play for tonight. Off the bet U.S. line, it's an eight and a half point spread. And so the Citadel will be his play laying those points against UNC Central. Uh, here in this game coming up tonight. Next up on the docket, again, another team that we've talked about from time to time, and that's the Liberty Flames. Liberty laying 22.5 with Delaware State. The total 127 in this game. And right back to Jeff Nadu once again here for his thoughts on what might or might not be the play tonight. What do you think, big man on campus? Yeah, I, I played under. Uh, I played 127 and a half. I think 127 is fine as well. Um, when we first look at any Liberty game, you have to ask yourself, who's going to control pace? Liberty's always going to control the pace, especially at home against a team like Delaware State, who you know, I actually would probably say is a bottom three team in America. I, I think you'd probably throw Mississippi Valley, Delaware State, and I don't know, maybe another SWAC team or, or Central Connecticut, someone like that, Chicago State maybe. Delaware State is horrific, okay? <laughs> they do nothing well. Uh, they do nothing at a high level. And Liberty plays super slow. Okay, They're going to take 20, 21 seconds every possession and then take a shot, and it's either going to go in or go out. And by the time you know it, 30 seconds have went off the clock. Uh, they're also going to make Delaware State play at that very slow pace. It's not going to be easy for Delaware State. Keep in mind, Liberty just gave up 45 points to Missouri, an SEC team. Now, I'm not saying that – you know, we, we can compare that to this, but I mean, how is Delaware State going to get the 50 in this game? I know their team totals 52 and a half. Um, I also don't really believe, I don't look at these scores and say, well, I think Liberty is going to get to 80. It's not like they're like an all, all encompassed offense either. If Delaware State does anything well, I mean, they're actually okay from the three point line defensively, uh, which goes without saying, Liberty is pretty dependent on three. So if they can make Liberty kind of get into shooting a lot of bad jump shots. Maybe they're just not going down tonight. I think this one flies under the total. Uh, you look at a similar matchup, Bethune-Cookman out of the uh, same conference as uh, Delaware State, 59-51. Okay? Barely got to 110. So I look at this number. Ken Palm had it like 75-53. I think that's a little high. I thought, thought it would be like, I don't know, 71-49, 69-48, something like that. I'm going to lean under the total. I think Delaware State has a bear of a trouble scoring tonight. Fair enough. Matt, any uh, thoughts? I know you don't have an official play here, but the Liberty Flames, we have talked about them a couple of different times on the show. What about this? Uh, I mean, I, I love Liberty. I watched the, I watched pretty much that whole Missouri game and, and thought it was impressive. And I wish they were playing somebody with a pulse because I would, I would fade them in the first half because there's got to be a little bit of a hangover. You just had an SEC team in your building. It was just a sold-out atmosphere, and now you're bringing in Delaware State. I, I do think it's interesting, you know, Jeff did, Cherry picked the one game that was kind of along the same lines. But then you look at that next one, Maryland Eastern Shore, who is around the same area as Delaware State as well, was a 73-61 game. I don't like unders in college yeah, basketball. Yeah, but it still went up. It, it, you know, that, that, that just I, – I get it. You know, I didn't mention that. I can't no, mention No, no, no. I, right. I, look, I agree with you. If there was ever an under here, like I would take the under because, I've you know, having watched a lot of Liberty basketball, they don't want to run and they don't – and I, yeah, as you said, like if I actually had any stones, I'd take the Delaware State under because I think they could struggle to take 50. <laughs> But I just – I don't take unders in college basketball, especially like this. Like, you know, the Virginia games, like there could be that one brief scoring burst and that makes it, you know, a little bit hairy. But, like, I agree. His his logic's pretty good on this one. Liberty should win this game rather easily, and Delaware State's putrid. So, you know, if I took unders, I would definitely consider this under. The, the point of contention that, that that's fascinating by what he said, and I, I think it's interesting because the MIAC and SWAC – 
I've always been under the belief that if I take 10 Miak and Swack games, nine will involve the Miak or Swack team not shooting above 30% from the three-point line. These are generally leagues that are very dependent on getting to the line, getting to the hoop. Maryland Eastern Shore was 10 for 25 in that game. I'm going to go ahead and bank that Delaware State doesn't do that. Again, I mean, we, we can all assume things will happen and they won't. But, you know, again, I, I just think Liberty's that good defensively, and I hope that, you know, Maryland doesn't or, – uh, or Delaware State doesn't get to 50 here. All right, so officially, again, on this game, Jeff's play is the under – uh, under the total of 127 tonight in Delaware State and Liberty. That uh, leaves us. And by the way, uh, keep the questions uh, coming in the chat. I already see that there are several of them because we're about to get to the Q&A here after this next game that we have. We may have a little extra time to get to four or five of you if you've got questions. Maybe not as specific to the Monday night, but uh, something in general as well. Put them in the chat. Put them in the uh in the queue there, and we'll get to the questions here in a couple moments. Very interesting game, the battle for the state of New Mexico. At least I'm calling it that. New Mexico State and New Mexico tonight at the pit in Albuquerque. Richard Patino's first taste of this rivalry. And New Mexico State comes in, what, 6-2 and two on the year. And as the road favorite, hello, for the Aggies at uh, minus 4.5, the total 150 and a half. I want to begin with mid-major Matt. Let's shake it up and and uh, and kick it to him first. Again, you do not have an official play on this tonight, but any thoughts here in the mid-major wheelhouse on New Mexico State and New Mexico? Well, I mean, I think you know you've got a, a you know a rivalry game that's huge, and for New Mexico, it's the second straight game for them. Um, you know, you look at New Mexico State; they played at UTEP in between, so at least there was a game. Uh, look, the thing that sticks out sticks out to me here is New Mexico State gave up 101 points, and that's just not the way they play. Like this is when you think of Chris Jan's teams. They're a defensive-based team, and you look at all the other scores that they've had. You know, they gave up that 101. The only other one that was up there is they gave up 71 to UTEP at home. Oddly enough, another home and home here. So I fully expect, even on the road here, that things are going to change defensively. Like, you know that they worked on their defense. And now, like, look, the other thing is I like Chris Chance over Richard Patino. I know Richard Patino has done good things here. I know they're five and three, and I know they've won some games so far. and They've looked better than they did last year. But, like, you have to kind of throw last year out. They didn't have a home last year and everything that was involved with COVID. And, you know, I think they at one point didn't want to play the rest of the season. And so they kind of moved on. It was just a miserable season. So, of course, they're going to look better than last year you know the edge here i think is to is to new mexico state here I, and also look i don't think the scoring is going to be as high i just think new mexico state's not going to let them run we're not going to see 80 possessions tonight i don't think because it's just not what new mexico state does i know their offense is better than new mexico's but their defense needs to be better than new Mexico's. so i think we see a, a slightly different game a uh, certainly a lower scoring game than we saw just a couple of days ago and I should correct myself because it's a rarity, but it has happened already, and it happened just a few days ago, last Tuesday night. These teams played in what, Las Cruces, and now playing in Albuquerque uh, again, back-to-back -back against each other, or well, at least back-to-back -back in the case of New Mexico. As Matt was mentioning, New Mexico State played another opponent before coming back around to play New Mexico again. All right, Jeff, pick up. The, the previous game was 101-94. You would think both teams have talked about defense in the last few days before playing each other again. This is unusual. You don't see this a lot. You may see it in conference play, for example, at the very end of a season where you might play a team twice in a week or a week and a half, but very rare that you see out-of-conference teams like this that would play back-to-back. Uh, almost. So uh, what are your thoughts to all of that, Jeff Nadeau, if anything? Yeah, but remember, I mean, last year gave us a good picture. And, and one of the good things about it from a handicap perspective is we saw what it was like to play teams on back-to-backs. And what I noticed was a lot of the time the first game would be high scoring and the second game wouldn't be as high scoring. We have to look at the box score of this game. I went back and watched this game. 77 free throws in this game. Probably not going to happen again tonight. There were two 31-point scores on both teams. Uh, Jalen House scored 31 and Teddy Allen scored 31. Probably not going to happen as well either. And as Matt uh, mentioned, good point, you know, New Mexico State wants to play slow. They don't want to, you know, they're not giving up 101 points. It's not something they normally do. Uh, it's just not something that they're built on. I think Chris Jantz a much better coach than Richard Pitino. Uh, and look, I think in New Mexico, it's a little bit 
not a bigger game, but it, it's 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 a it's a, a revenge game. I think defensive possessions will be a lot more valued here. I don't think it'll be as fast paced as the one the other night. This will be a tempo tonight. I think that will benefit New Mexico State. I would probably come back to the well and just bet under the number. I, Jen, as like I said, you mentioned conference play. You usually see a lot of this stuff back to backs, but I, I think this game is probably first to 70 wins. I think it's going to be a lot more normal, not as many free throws. Um, I would lean under if I was playing this game. Muted. Again, uh, not an official play, not an official play from either one of our handicappers, as I was saying. Uh, but, uh, but nonetheless, very intriguing here as to whether it will be a high scoring affair or not coming up. So let's get to some Q and a before we are done here. Some of the people have been putting in the chat again, it's a fairly light card tonight. A couple of people have been asking about the Houston game with Alcorn state tonight. I know both of you are going to probably roll your eyes. Joseph wants to know what about this game. Alex is looking at the 33 points. It's a huge number. But he says Houston tends to pour it on these teams. Is this a case again, mid-major Matt, maybe you first. Is this a case again where you're just betting a game just to bet a game and be careful? Uh, well, for, for this, I mean, look, the only way I would go is potentially the first half team total over for Houston. They've got a road game against Alabama coming up Saturday, so they're going to put out maximum effort in the first half. And we saw, you know, one of the plays that, uh, that was up there that I played on Friday was the, or we talked about on Friday because we talked about the Houston Bryant game and I made the joke that Houston was going to get every rebound. Uh, Houston scored 111 points in that game and you look and they scored 52 in the first half. This seems like classic case of one of those, as we've talked about, swag teams that's constantly on the road um they're not very good they just gave 85 to Tulane. houston's gonna be focused in the first half they'll get ready for alabama this weekend i would play like a houston first half team total over that way you get the maximum effort the maximum focus because then the second half who knows what's going to happen fair enough on that one we continue on i will i will say one thing here and and i might get a rolled eye on this one from matt uh this is the best team Alcorn State will play. And I know they played Gonzaga. Okay. Gonzaga's good. I don't think they're as good as they've been in years past. I think that was pretty evident on Saturday night. Houston is an absolute bear. Okay? And he made a very astute point. You look at Houston at eight games this year, five of them, they've been up by 20 or more at the half. Okay. This team absolutely pulverizes teams in the first half. And this is an Alcorn team. I mean, another, he made a point about Bryant's rebounding. I mean, I think the only way Alcorn State hopes to score is off of offensive misses and things of that nature. They're just not very good. Uh, as he said, they just played too late on Saturday. Probably tired legs coming right back against this team. Uh, first half looks really good here. Uh, I, I would be in on that as well. Okay, not an official situation, obviously, here as we're in the Q&A. Again, that's a large number, 33 points, but Houston has been prolific scoring. Final four teams, Sasser still shooting the ball well for them. We'll see what happens on that. Sam wants to know Colgate and Columbia. Specifically, he's interested in the over for this game. Columbia, of course, had the win at the Carrier Dome against Syracuse where they scored 100. They've lost five times, though, already here in the early part of the season. Either one of you with a thought on this? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think Colgate is uh, – I think a lot of people will look at them and say, well, the three and five, who cares? I mean, their conference schedule is what matters. Uh, they're still really good. They're still going to be very potent offensively. They really haven't even gotten going this year yet. I think a lot of people will look at this number and be like, well, 21 seems high. They haven't played well. Uh, they're significantly better than Columbia is. Um, Columbia has beaten no one. They played nobody. Um, they're not very good on either end. Um, I- I'd probably lean on laying the number as opposed to taking it. I think Colgate's pretty strong, and I think at the end of the year they're going to be right back in the NCAA tournament. Langle's a great coach, Philly guy, Fran Dunphy disciple. I-, I think they're really good, and I think they'll probably pound Columbia tonight. Okay, so the under over again there, 149 and a half. Matt, did you have a thought on that at all or no? Uh, no, other than Colgate, I think just hit another three against my alma mater because that's what they did that game. I mean, look, you know, for, for the over here, like we've talked, like I'm having a chat in the chat box because somebody said they were surprised I don't play unders in college basketball. And like it's, it's you know, the pace here, you've got two teams in the 170s. So we're asking, look, they've both sped up and they've both played down. So it's my only worry about an over here is that if they play to their pace and 
and they play like a mediocre pace game, they both could have good offensive nights and still not get to this number because this number is kind of reserved for teams that are in the top 100s or even the top 80s. So that's my concern for the total here is that if you're looking at the over, you're asking two teams that are about average to be better than average. And also, uh, the individual in the chat's mentioning why did Alcorn State schedule Gonzaga and Houston? Because this is this is how they fund their athletic program. Okay, uh, Coppin right State has mentioned that right Juan there. Dixon, yeah, Juan Dixon mentioned that their entire athletic program is funded through buy games in college basketball. And you know what? And I've said this before. I've been a huge proponent. If I ever got powerful enough to uh, stop this kind of thing, I would. Because you know what happens, guys, at the end of the day? Alcorn State will play all these games. They'll make a ton of money for their school, and their school will fund different things because of it. And you know what will happen at the end of the year? And it's absolutely disgraceful. The academic performance rating will come in, and Alcorn State will have a below 60% mark. And you know what the NCAA will do? Like the mafia members they are, they will <laughs> tell Alcorn State, you can't play in the postseason because your grades suck. How do you expect kids' grades to be good with this whirlwind travel and schedule they have to play? It's sickening and pathetic. It's wrong that they have to do this to these kind of kids. Um, th- these are the, the real basketball players, the ones that are student athletes, and they have to really contend with a lot. It's a shame that they have to do this kind of thing. Well, and you may mention you were talking about a team, and I can't even remember which one. It's not important, but th- this team was playing like what did you tell me? Like four games in five nights, and it was yes. from one of the smaller conferences. And right. again, it's all about this. They're getting paid to play four times, and it's funding their athletic department. And, and someone, and, and someone that will, is lazy will say, "Well, you know, they can make NIL money now." Listen, no offense, but someone that plays in 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 Lorman, Mississippi, at right. at, at Alcorn State. I mean, there's there's probably not a lot of NIL money there. I just hate to say it. So, right. you know, it, it's it's not fair and it, it's screwed up. For the bottom probably 150 programs, there's not NIL money for their players or very little sure. in their market or for their name. That's a that's a fair statement. A couple more real quick. Jay Rush says Towson and Kent State. Uh, anything about that one, guys, that, that might stand out for tonight? Uh, that one coming out of the chat where Kent State is favored by six at home. Um, I, I didn't have much on it, frankly. Uh, Kent State has, uh, you know, I don't really know what they do particularly well. Um, they, they haven't really started off real well here so far. I I don't have much. You know, two teams out of conference is not real interested on a Monday night. You got a small card. This is the kind of game where, to me, like, I understand if you bet Houston because they're really good and Alcorn's not. You know, these are just two kind of middling, uh, you know, top 200 teams playing each other on a Monday night out of conference. Game means virtually nothing. So, yeah, I, I have no interest. I uh, I had a small lean towards Towson. The for the the biggest thing that stuck out to me was Towson's really good offensive rebound. They've always been that big tough team that doesn't you know they basically they play volleyball when they miss the ball they go up and get it kind of like on a they're like a cheaper way cheaper uh, version watered down version of Houston in that they don't shoot the ball great but they go get the rebound and they make the closer shots from the farther shots. And then you look at Kent state, they've given up a ton of offensive rebounds so far this year. Um, that would be the only reason why I would lean towards Towson here. I do like sincere carry. I mean, I watched him obviously play in the, uh, in the a 10 and, and Justin Hamilton's the former temple guy who suddenly found himself in the Mac and probably playing more to his level. I didn't love it. And it, as you know, as Jeff said, you know, you're going to, we're going to get to the best bets in just a moment. And I don't have any best bets. It's just because, you know, this was a night that I'm perfectly fine with either playing something in Monday Night Football or starting to work extra on tomorrow's card. So, like, this is a game where I kind of like Towson, but not enough to make an official play and not enough to maybe just throw anything like pizza money on it just if I wanted to have some sort of play tonight. The Q&A continues. Kyrie wants to know Coastal Carolina Mercer. And he says, please, and anybody that's asking us nicely, we will take a peek here. Coastal Carolina is the home favorite minus two uh, in this one. Uh, any thought from either of you about that game tonight? Uh, I, I will say, I mean, Coastal Carolina, you know, they always they throw zones at you. If you can shoot against the zone, I, I, I think you'll play well. I, I like Mercer. I've always enjoyed them, liked them under Bob Hoffman, liked them under this regime as well. Um, they have a couple guys that have been there forever. And Philip Haas seems like he's been there for about seven years. Um, I would probably lean on Mercer. Another tough game. Um, I just – feel like if you can shoot against Cliff Ellis' zones, you're, you're likely going to win. I'll throw one other thing out. I see Presbyterians playing uh, Moorhead State tonight, and 
you know, I wouldn't just gloss over and just think Moorhead's going to take care of business here. Presbyterian, I know they got beat up by Cincinnati and, and Tennessee, but I mean, let's be honest, they're on way different wavelength than those teams. But they hung around against Clemson and have you know beaten some pretty solid teams. I mean, we all know Citadel's solid, beat them uh, once, beat VMI twice, who went out in the West Coast and took care of business this weekend. Um, your Presbyterian's a tough team. I think they have some kids that can defend Janai Broom, the the big for Moorhead, the, the great uh, NBA prospect. Um, that's another one. If if there was a game that was kind of off the radar that like has two kind of middling teams against each other, I felt like that was a couple of too many points. But as Matt said, and I would say this in any on any day in college basketball, I don't bet full units until after December 25th or Christmas. January 1st is when I, I start getting really involved. Non-conference play can be really a crapshoot. There's only two or three really good weeks of it. Uh, the rest is just playing out the string until you get to the games that matter. Or you play a team that's going to change your, your your positioning. But games like this, not huge. Uh, okay. I would say I looked at the at the Mercer team total over here. I think Mercer, as as Jeff said, could find some success. They're a good offensive team. Their defense is atrocious. I mean, they're in the 300s in both two and three point percentage uh, defense. But you look at Coastal. Coastal can't hit the three, and they're not great at the two, and they can't hit free throws. So. Um, you know, I kind of lean towards Mercer here. If their defense was better, it would be a better play. So maybe once again, and it's something I've kind of talked about and Jeff has as well. If you don't trust a bunch of the units in the in this game, you know, if you trust the most uh, the Mercer offense, take the team total over for Mercer. That way you don't have to worry about what Coastal Carolina does for a total here. So if there was anything here, I trust most it's Mercer on the road in this situation. But I, I would just take their team total because their defense is so bad that Coastal Carolina could find some success if there's any sort of pace in this game okay good enough on uh, on that off the q a thank you for those again we're live monday through friday at one and the live chat is always going there and we do get some good feedback from you guys with games that you're interested in try to squeeze it in on the end of the show that leads us to what we have officially tonight with our best bets on the monday night card and uh, Jeff Nadu is the only one with official plays on Citadel laying the number. And then he likes that under for reasons that he explained for Liberty and Delaware State tonight. Mid-Major Matt, as he said, will sit back, watch Monday Night Football, and do some handicapping for tomorrow more so than anything else. Again, the Iowa-Illinois game will be intriguing, and that one will get underway before the Monday Night Football game with the Patriots and the Bills gets underway to cross over sports. And then New Mexico, New Mexico State, again, very intriguing that they're playing for the second time in less than a week. Good heads up there from mid-major Matt all over that with the analysis. Guys, anything in closing here? Uh, anything else off the weekend, et cetera, as we get ready to head into another week? We're now in the month of December and ready to roll. No, nothing from me. Just uh, another Monday in in Jeff Nadeau's world, another Monday in, in TJ's world and Matt's world. Just again, you know, be uh, be cognizant. Of, don't go crazy with your units and just, uh, you know, a lot of people point out, you know, the games that they're on, you know, look at why you're on the game. What why, what, what brought that to your attention? Um you know, at the end all be all, we're, we're not the, the last thing in defense. You can make your own pl- plays and decide what you want. But just remember, don't go crazy on these cards. Um, you want to have plenty of ammo come conference play time. Like all of that. Matt, a closing thought? I mean, it, it sometimes, as I said, it's okay to sit out. I mean, there's not a ton of games. There's not a ton of great games. And certainly also the in-game looks, too. If you're watching a game and you see something and you want to bet something in-game, that's always a way to go because you're actually watching the game. So, it's okay. Tuesday's got a great card. The guys tomorrow will have a lot more to talk about, certainly, especially with uh, Syracuse Villanova, among others. So it's okay to sit out on Monday, especially with a great Tuesday coming up. Listen to my man, mid major Matt, teasing the Tuesday show before we're ever even there, before we ever get done with the Monday show. That will pretty well wrap it up here. Good luck to Jeff Nadu with his two official plays. Mid-Major Matt, thank you as well for hanging here. Guys, we appreciate it. Good luck uh, tonight, Jeff, with two of your plays this evening. Thank you. Matt, thank you as well, and we thank you for watching the Bet U.S. College Basketball Show for a Monday.